Hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I want to wish you, you, and especially you, a happy King's Day. Today, January the 15th, the world has set aside, or at least America, has set aside this day to honor one of the greatest Americans, in my opinion, who ever lived. His face should be up there with Washington, Lincoln, Jefferson, and Roosevelt on Mount Rushmore. That is, and the person I'm speaking of is the doctor, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Not just a great African American, but this man was one of the greatest Americans Americans to ever live and it's a wonderful thing it's a wonderful thing that America takes out time takes out a day to acknowledge uh, the this great man who was assassinated who gave his life for righteous causes for the cause of civil rights he was definitely a voice for the voiceless and I my friends would not be where I am today were it not for this great man and I want to say this he wasn't just just great for black America. He was great for America. He challenged America to live up to his creed. He challenged the consciousness of America. God used him to bring out the goodness of America. Just a little, uh, a little information on me personally. My first experience with marching, getting involved in, uh, uh, in marches and demonstrations was when I was a student at Fayetteville State University. I marched to have uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's uh, birthday declared a legal holiday, and it was signed into law on November the 3rd, 1983, by President Ronald Reagan. And I tell you, I am so excited about uh, this, uh, the third month. Monday in January of each year, we celebrate this great man, and I am glad to join in to the celebration. Now, I want to add something to it, because this great man, sometimes people try to tarnish him. There's a lot of historical revision and revisionists out there who love to try to change things. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 14 and verse 16, let not your good be evil spoken of. Well, today I'm not going to allow Dr. King's good to be evil spoken of. You know, there's a lot of groups who try to hitch to the Trump, to the uh, Dr. King. King train and to try to hitch on to his wagon. But I want to say to you that this man of God stood on biblical principles and stood for the word of God. Cecil Richards and Planned Parenthood, the largest killer of African Americans by far, the largest provider of abortions in this nation, tries to uh, uh, connect with Dr. King. Uh, more blacks die from abortions than HIV, homicides, diabetes, accidents, and heart disease combined. Nothing is wiping us out like abortion. And yet you hear uh, Planned Parenthood saying, you know, Dr. King received the Margaret Sanger Award. Now, the truth is he did. Planned Parenthood gave Dr. King the Mar Margaret Sanger Award in 1966. However, at the time, uh, the organization was still publishing a pamphlet that stated, is birth control abortion? Definitely not. Now, this was Planned Parenthood's own pamphlet. It says, is birth control abortion? Definitely not. An abortion kills the life of a baby after it has begun. It is dangerous to your life and health. Now, this was, end of quote, this was their position, and, and their position changed four years after Dr. King was assassinated. So they know that when Dr. King uh, 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 accepted their award, that he was not pro-abortion, and they were not pro-abortion, they were pro-birth control. Dr. King even said this, uh, and this was written in the, the book Strides Toward Freedom. Quote, the Negro cannot win if he is willing to sell the future of his children for his personal and immediate comfort and safety. 
while he spoke. Now, this is what Alveda, his uh, niece said about him. While he spoke this in a civil rights context, context, it is an irrefutable pro-life statement. I tell you, I agree with her 100%. Cecil Richards knows that Dr. King was not pro-abortion. As a matter of fact, when she gave him the award, uh, what she says now is that she, it was in recognition of his uh, furthering reproductive health and rights. Now, first of all, there's no reproduction in abortion whatsoever. But now when they actually gave him the award in 1966, which, by the way, he was not there to accept. Uh, his wife accepted it for him. Here's what the award was for. His courageous resistance to bigotry and his lifelong dedication to the advancement of social justice and human dignity. Is it me? Can anybody find reproductive health in this? Of course not. They are trying to revise history and trying to make it seem like this preacher, you know, his doctorate, by the way, was in theology. This preacher, the Dr. Martin Luther King, was not a pro-abortion. And by the way, I wish someone, I, I visited the King Memorial in Washington, D.C. It's beautiful. But did the people know that he was a preacher? Did they know that he preached from the Bible? Apparently they didn't because there's not one biblical quote uh, up there at the memorial. There's, there are quotes and quotes and quotes, but nothing from the Bible. They are trying to secularize Dr. King because these people hate Christianity because Christianity stands in their way. They know you can't be a true Bible-believing, Bible-toting Christian and believe in abortion. And I'll tell you something else you can't do. You can't be a true Bible-believing Christian and, and, and believe the scripture and believe that homosexuality is right. Or that, that homosexuals should, that men should be allowed to marry men or women should be allowed to marry women. Now, I know when I say this that people call me a hater. They say, there goes Wooden again. He's mean. He's cruel. He's homophobic. Oh, my God. You don't want that charge today. He's this. He's that. But I tell you what else I am. I'm right. And I'm in line with the scriptures. So here I am again, making sure Dr. King's good is not evil spoken of on King's day. Hallelujah. Now, here's what happens. You know, they say, uh, you know, everybody now is saying Dr. King would have done this. Dr. King would have done that. Dr. King, Dr. King, Dr. King. But now, I believe the best way to determine what a man would do is based on what he left on record. Even the, the New Yorker has gotten involved in this and said that King would have joined into Colin Kaepernick's uh, taking a knee. I think that the issues that they are taking the knee over are issues that would have interest Dr. King. But I do believe Dr. King would have said to them, hey guys, come and meet with me. And let me give you a better strategy. I don't think he would have joined in with that strategy because the strategy makes it too easy for people to say it's about the flag. You can't say it's about the flag if you choose to take the knee during the national anthem. And you definitely don't go to a foreign country and stand for that anthem and take a knee for your own country's anthem and then say that it's not about the flag. Even though the issues that they are concerned about are valid issues but uh, a little strategy a little strategy a little better strategy i think would go a long way but back to this back to this my time's running out praise the lord are you enjoying king's day i hope you are you should listen in 19 uh, uh, dr king used to do a uh uh, 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 an article in Ebony Magazine back in 1958. Now, this is what took place uh, 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 in 1958. A man wrote Dr. King this uh, letter. He said this, My problem is different from those of most people. I am a boy, but I feel about boys the way I ought to feel about girls. At least he knew his feelings were, 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 uh, weren't right. I don't want my parents to know uh, about me. What can I do? Uh, is there a place where I can go for help? I hope this young man back in 1958 got help. Here's Dr. King's answer. <clears throat> Quote, these are the words of Dr. King, not Patrick Wood. And by the way, he was not a member of Upper Room. 
He never heard me preach. I wasn't born till 61. And, and, and I was a kid when, he was, when his life was taken. And yet, Dr. King says this. Your problem, he calls it a problem, is not uh, at all an uncommon one. However, it does require careful attention. The type of feelings that you have toward boys is probably not an innate tendency. You wasn't born that way. That's what he's saying. But something that has been culturally acquired, something happened to you. Your reasons for adopting this habit have now been consciously suppressed and unconsciously repressed. Other words, you don't remember what happened to you to cause you to feel this way. Therefore, it is necessary to deal with this problem by getting back to some of the experiences and circumstances that led to the habit. Other words, you, you need to remember what happened that, that caused you to be turned out. That's exactly what he's saying here. Listen, in order to deal with this I suggest that you see a good psychiatrist. Man, if you said that today, people would tar and feather you if you told a member of the LBGTQ and whatever other alphabet community that they need a good psychiatrist. You need a good psychiatrist. Um, you need Jesus, actually. Um, he says you need to see a good psychiatrist who can assist you in bringing to the forefront of conscience all those experiences and circumstances that led to the habit. You are already on the right road toward a solution since you, since you honestly recognize the problem and have a desire to solve it. End of quote. Now, these are the words of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. So today, all around the country, everybody's going to be saying, Dr. King, Dr. King, Dr. King believed this, Dr. King believed that, Dr. Dr. King believed the other. Well, these are the words of Dr. King, and I trust uh, his words. And it was written in Ebony Magazine in 1958. Now, he called it a problem. Dr. King called it a problem. Uh, uh, he said that the boy was, uh, that something happened that, that caused him to have these uh, homosexual appetites. And uh, he called it a problem that needed a, a solution, a type of feeling uh, that requires careful attention. And he said he needed a psychiatrist. So I guess Dr. King wasn't concerned about political correctness at the time. You know, most men of God, most uh, uh, of those of us who believe we have a calling, a calling of God, a mandate to declare God's truth and let the chips fall where they may aren't politically correct. We just go by Isaiah 58 and 1, cry aloud and spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion and show my people their transgressions at the house of Jacob, their sins. Now, it appears to me that Dr. King and his wife Coretta uh, had uh, disagreements on things like this. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. King, uh, the late Mrs. Coretta Scott King, God rest her soul. Uh, she said this in, in 2012 while fighting against the marriage amendment uh, in the state of North Carolina, which stated that marriage is a union between a man and a woman. Uh, she says, I appeal to everyone who believe in Martin Luther King's dream to make room at the table of brother and sisterhood for lesbians and gay, you know, I don't call them gay, gay people. Now, these were the, 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 the sentiments of, uh, of Mrs. King, but I wonder what part of uh, her husband's dream was she referencing? Because according to this, he wasn't calling for room at the table of brotherhood and sisterhood, wherever that table is. He was calling for a biblical standard. As a matter of fact, he was calling for a psychiatrist. So I guess they disagreed. And by the way, today is not Mrs. King's day. It's not the King Family Day. It's not the King's Children's Day. It's Dr. King's Day. And we are celebrating this man. What is your point, Wooden? Don't, here's my point. It's a simple one. Let's not allow this man's good deeds to be pulled down in muck and mire. Let's not allow his life and legacy to be tarnished by those who are behaving uh, in, in, in ways that are totally antithetical to this man's life, 
his stated positions, and most importantly, the word of God. You know, uh, during the March on Washington, he had a man on his organizational team who was a brilliant guy. His name was Bayard Rustin. Rustin was a openly a uh, homosexual man, and Rustin wanted, even during the March on Washington, during the civil rights struggle, uh, Rustin wanted uh, homosexuality to be included, to be an issue, to be addressed, along with the battle for a uh, skin color equity. And uh, Dr. King said no, because Dr. King knew that there's a difference between our beautiful, lovely, brown skin, which has never been evil, which has never been a detriment, which is a blessing from God. Hallelujah. God made us this way. I wouldn't want to be white, Asian, Hispanic, or any other color. With me, the God of the Bible got it right the first time. Dr. King knew that it is a disgrace to compare our beautiful skin color to immoral, anti-human, anti-Bible, anti-Christ behavior. And so he wouldn't allow it. So let's keep the record straight. Uh, this is all for now. I love you. I am a proud American. I'm a proud African-American. I am a proud member of America of the darker hue. I'm proud to be in this great country, and I'm proud to celebrate this marvelous day. We're celebrating the life and legacy of one of the greatest men, not just one of the greatest Americans, but one of the greatest men who ever lived, led a mighty nonviolent protest. You're talking about articulation. You're talking about intelligence. You're talking about wit. You're talking about an anointing. You talk about power. You talk about Dr. King. You know, in colleges and universities uh, around the world, his speeches, his way of thinking, his, 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 his wit is studied and admired. This man was ahead of his time, but he was a man of his times. And I believe, my friends, that he's somewhere around the throne and, and celebrating with Jesus Christ. I, I believe that he recognizes that this country has come a long way. But yes, we have a long way to go. But we won't get where we're trying to go revising history. Lying about the man's positions, allowing people to hitch their cart to Dr. King's wagon. I hope I said that right, Brother Gary. Who should not be allowed to do so? King was not for abortion. King was not for homosexuality and lesbianism. This Baptist preacher <laughs> made his stand on the word of God. Now, enjoy your King's Day. I love you, my friends. I pray that everybody, black, white, red, yellow, uh, participate in this wonderful celebration as we recognize one of the greatest human beings who ever lived. Happy King's Day. Thanks for watching.